Um, my name is Mary Zappi. I'm one of the dietitians at the Del Mar Cancer Center and also here at Living Well. And we're so happy that you're here. We have some people in person as well. So thanks for coming. And we have a great topic. And I have my colleague here with me today. Hi, I'm Janine Fitzmorris, and I work at the Warrenville Cancer Center. Yeah, so thanks so, for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming. So our topic is a great topic. Um, we're excited to start out this new Being Well service. Um, session with um, just moving forward after a cancer diagnosis. So it's about nutrition during survivorship, which is any time after diagnosis. And um, we have some healthy eating tips for you. And then for those that are in person, we'll have a recipe tasting here at the end. So this is the first, um, if you're following along in the, the PowerPoint, the second slide will show you um, kind of our series. It's a six week series. Um, 6 p.m. for all of these classes, and they are virtual or in person. And so you'll see we have really good topics. We have kind of a summary today, and then we'll talk about the Mediterranean style of eating, um, maintaining healthy weight, gut health, and the microbiome, which we're learning so much about, aren't we, Janine? And then cooking for one or two, and then the culinary completion, where we'll have um, a hands on interactive cooking demo at that point. So let's kind of get started. The key things about survivorship that we talk about um, at the Cancer Center or here at Living Well are healthy eating, healthy weight, activity, and stress reduction. So all of those components together are part of the American Cancer Society recommendations for, um, you know, kind of preventative of recurrence. So healthy eating, we really want to teach uh, simple recipes and learn skills so that you can cook at home because that's going to improve your diet quality. And then in the kitchen at the grocery store, um, just, you know, your attitude towards food in general and um, relationship with food. We want to kind of help that out because once you're learning to cook, you're learning how to assemble quick, easy meals that will um, encourage you to eat more healthily, healthfully. And then a healthy weight, um, achieving uh, weight management. We know that that can decrease risks of certain cancers, especially the gynecological cancers. We know that can make a really big difference. Um, so we really want to kind of form those healthy habits and avoid um, dieting, really, because if you're eating for health, it's more of a long-term goal. And that's kind of the long-term what we talk about is um, getting those ha healthy habits established. Um, activity, Janine is an expert in this area, so she's going to talk a little bit more about this. But activity in general, we want to increase our frequency, increase the quality of our physical activity and participation, and really um, doing something that's fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> um, stress reduction, don't hesitate to use living well. Um, there are so many different services that they have here, just making sure that you're taking advantage of the yoga classes, the massages. There's a new massage therapist here that we met that's wonderful. She's very energetic. Um, so, you know, taking care, taking those tools and using that to reduce stress. We know reducing stress can reduce those free radicals in our body that can lead to um, chronic illness. So we want to reduce that stress. So let's look at this graphic here on um, the next slide where we're talking about weight, diet, and physical activity. There's a growing body of evidence and scientific research that demonstrates the strong correlation between lifestyle changes and reducing risk of cancer occurrence. So that's really good to know. That's something that's within our control. And that's the nice part about it. When you find out information about healthy eating, activity, and um, you know, just healthy diets, those in general, those factors can really help. So, and that's part of the American Institute for Cancer Research Guidelines. So all of our information that we have in our classes are based on evidence-based guidelines from these organizations. So what is the main thing that we talk about here? A lot of times it's the Mediterranean diet. That is part of the American Cancer Society 
guidelines. And so that's what we focus on. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion around Mediterranean. People think it's all plants. And really the Mediterranean diet is the diet that is followed in that Mediterranean um, area and the countries around the Mediterranean. And it does include more chicken and fish. We have um, a whitefish recipe here tonight that we're going to be sampling. Um, and so all of our recipes are on the Living Well website. So just check that out so that you can uh, take advantage of those. Um, Ashley is here tonight keeping us all organized and she does that on the website as well. So there's a culinary and nutrition section there with all of our um, recipes and you can find some of our cooking videos on the Living Well YouTube channel as well. So having more chicken and fish as part of the Mediterranean diet. Of course, eating more fruits and vegetables is helpful. There are so many antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties in those. And then having the healthy fats, such as olive oil, peanut butter, um, in moderation. We, we don't want to overdo it with that. Or um, the whole grains. So whole grains are a part of that, meaning whole wheat bread, whole grain pasta, um, brown rice. And then, um, you know, just making sure that you're using some herbs and spices. Uh, we're going to talk about the anti-inflammatory foods as well. Um, and then low-fat dairy is also part of the um, Mediterranean diet. So on the next slide, it kind of summarizes what I was saying about eating more chicken and fish. Um, sometimes I think fish is, can be intimidating to cook. So we are going to talk a little bit about um, some simple ways to do that. And then um, the servings of fruits and vegetables for an 1800 calorie diet, that means about three servings of fruit and five servings of vegetables a day. And those servings would be a one cup serving. So I don't recommend that you measure all of your food all the time, but it's good to kind of take a look and see kind of where you are as far as, you know, measuring out maybe one or two times. So you kind of know. Um, I've got a couple examples here, the one cup, and then um, these are uh, blueberries and strawberries. And so it's it's a fairly nice serving. Um, and then for if you're using an apple, um, this would be more of a one cup serving as opposed to the really big apples. That might be one and a half servings. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then the healthy fats, um, avocado is another one that's good, but a lot of times people think a half of an avocado would be a portion, and that would be a little bit too much. So maybe an eighth um, or a quarter if you're putting it in a salad for two people. And then including the low fat dairy. So I like to use like a low fat um, cottage cheese, like a 1%. The zero fat doesn't give you as much satiation. So I kind of like to use that one. And then whole grains. And then activity is actually part of the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle. So how can you follow the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle? On the next slide, it talks about, you know, using plant-based meals and snacks. And then what does that mean, plant-based? So there are some things like peanut butter where they're coming from nuts or incorporating beans and lentils, like now this is chili season. So that's an easy way to incorporate those in. Um, picture your plate with colorful, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean meats, low fat dairy. Um, I really like to use a lot of chicken, but also ground turkey, ground chicken. Those are good substitutes. And maybe if your family isn't used to it, you could try half and half. Um, occasional beef is okay on the Mediterranean diet as well. Um, we really like to um, incorporate nuts and seeds in our snacks. So having um, like a trail mix or um, a salad where you're using sunflower seeds. Those are a lot of times with our patients, we I see one shaking her head. Yeah, we, we try to incorporate different kinds of protein to keep from losing weight. And then, um, you know, in the summertime, it's easy to use fresh herbs and spices. Um, and we actually have a garden here at Living Well, but um, it's uh, certainly not out there ready for us to pick today. So sometimes we can use the dried herbs and that's okay too. So as part of the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle, 
those that live in those countries are limiting processed and prepackaged foods. Um, so sometimes those are okay. And everyone has a pizza night occasionally at their house, but maybe incorporate using a side salad with that or um, making sure you're having fruits and vegetables on your plate if you are using an occasional prepackaged meal. We want to try to avoid added sugar, and that's part of the anti-inflammatory recommendations too, less salt, um, which is in some of the processed foods, and less sugar. So making sure that we're, um, the U.S. Dietary Guidelines say having less than six grams of added sugar per serving is what you should try to look for on the label. That's a lot of numbers, but if you can think about looking at the added sugar on the label, which is separate from the carbohydrates, that'll kind of tell you how much is on that in that particular serving. Most of the trans fats now have been eliminated by the industry, so they're not there anymore. Um, saturated fats are in um, sour cream and um, cream cheese and things like that. So usually we would recommend substituting like a plain yogurt or something so that you decrease the saturated fat in the diet. And I do love um, plain yogurt. A lot of times I'll add like some taco spices or a cumin or chili powder, and you really can't tell the difference. It's so good. Um, and then really the red and processed meats, um, so like bacon and sausage, we want to have those in moderation or look at using the chicken or the turkey alternatives. Um, those really have, um, with those with nitrates, have an increased risk for colon cancer. So we really want to avoid those if possible. Um, and then the sedentary lifestyle, that's another thing that um, in the Mediterranean, because the climate is warmer, a lot of times you see those peoples are walking more and getting more activity. And so that's really important. So just kind of keeping those things in mind um, when you can adding more plants in, but avoiding the processed foods and the added sugar is also helpful. So choosing fresh fruits and vegetables, um, if you can, when you are choosing those, eat local. Now, what does that mean? Now, we know right now we do have some farmers that are um, growing microgreens and growing greens in their hothouses. And there are some local farmers markets that are indoors, um, which is something that we're seeing more of, which is exciting. But if you can have less time from farm to table, the nutrient quality is going to be better. You're going to have less um, you're going to have more moisture loss if that takes a long time to get from farm to table. Um, you're going to have less quality and less nutrients as well, and possibly some microbial storage. So um, some microbial pro um, problems so, of spoilage. So it's really best if you can have those at peak maturity. And the peak maturity means that you're getting increased amount of vitamin C and also um, probably higher vitam vitamin B levels as well. So that's going to really help your overall nutrition. We want to provide higher amounts of those fat soluble nutrients so you can get those in your higher um, healthier fat foods like salmon, vitamins A and E, for example, and then um, the carotenoids as well, such as lycopene. Um, lycopene is found in tomatoes and it helps with prostate cancer prevention. So those are going to be affected by changes in heat, light, and oxygen. So we want to make sure that they are, um, we're not waiting too long for those to get from the farm to the table. Sometimes it can take as many as 15 days and that's a long time to wait. Um, and so the nutrient quality is going to be less. So the next slide um, talks about getting creative and just making sure that you have protein, vegetables, grains, whole grains if possible, fruit and dairy um, on your plate. I love this graphic um, showing the plate there up in the right hand corner, if you can see that. And it shows how half of your plate 
is fruits and vegetables. One quarter starch and one quarter protein. So this is part of the new US dietary guidelines. Um, most of the kids know about this, but the parents don't always know. It's kind of the new food guide pyramid, but I really like the graphic because if you look at your plate, you can look to see if it has color. Um, I love this little display. If you can see here, we've got um, the uh, peppers that Janine brought in and I had one delicata squash left. Um, so we like showing color because it makes things more appetizing. I love that fruit and vegetable um, rainbow that's on the bottom of the slide too. It just kind of shows the, the variety of color. And if you try to get those um, variety of colors, you're gonna get a variety of nutrients. You're gonna get some good um, fiber and those all are gonna have that anti-inflammatory property to help decrease risk of disease recurrence. So sometimes we'll suggest making a list of foods that you, and sometimes at the cancer centers, we help you make a list <laughs> um, of the food options and post them on the phone or on the fridge, and then consult your recipe books for vegetables and try to just remember to eat foods from the rainbow. Um, we have a couple of um, options here. Um, just talking about beans as a good source of protein. Um, beans and lentils have a lot of phytochemicals and inhibit um, cancer. And then they're also high in soluble fiber, iron and magnesium. So those are really helpful. And then in the next slide, we talk about the healthy oil options, um, such as olive oil, canola oil, nut butters, seeds. We talked about avocado a little bit. And then the omega-3s found in fish. So that's all part of the healthy um, fats category. We talked a little bit about portion size, just making sure that you're kind of being careful with this. Try to train your eyes for a half cup to a one cup portion. And then what does three or four ounces of protein look like? You can look at the palm of your hand and that's probably about three or four ounces, the same as a deck of cards. So try to fill up on um, raw veggies, carrots, cucumbers, peppers, celery, um, you know, and then go easy on those starchy vegetables like potatoes, corn, and peas. Um, on the next slide, you can see the, um, the amount of meat there next to the bicycle um, deck of cards. And you kind of want to focus on that and not have the whole plate. I think in the past, we think the whole plate should be a big plate of spaghetti with the meat sauce on top um, and a tiny little salad on the side. And now, we really want the salad to be a bigger place uh, on the plate and um, kind of monitor the portions of those. So just kind of keep an eye on that. You don't have to measure everything, but just try to avoid what we call as portion distortion and make sure that we're doing okay with that. So just a couple of tips about healthy weight. Um, it looks different on everyone. Uh, healthy weight depends on your gender, your height, your age your activity level, and also body composition. Um, a BMI, which is the body mass index, is a number that we use as dietitians to tell if you're in a healthy weight range. Uh, if you wanna know your BMI, we can help you with that. And the research shows those with a healthy BMI have less disease and have longer lives. So on the next page, it shows a little bit about the healthy BMI range. And for adults 18 plus, they have a little bit lower BMI, whereas for adults 65 plus, their BMI is a little bit higher, but still under 25. But this BMI does not take into account the things that we talked about, like body fat percentage and bone structure and muscle composition. Um, sometimes we see bodybuilders in the hospital that are sick for one reason or another, and their BMIs are higher but they're very um, muscle, uh, more muscle oriented. So, so Janine is gonna talk now a little bit more about this healthy weight, and then we're gonna have our food demo. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. So when we're um, talking about survivorship, Mary had talked about the healthy eating portion of it and different stress relief uh, techniques and different classes here at Living Well. One of the other important parts of survivorship is physical activity. 
and throughout different various stages of life, you know, people, you know, having kids, um, being busy with work, sometimes treatment, you know, physical activity um, is reduced. And it's an area that a lot of us would like to increase and part of the guidelines and to help re uh, prevent any reoccurrence, it's very important with the exercise. But to start right now that can, causes of cancer can be put into roughly two different categories, things we can control and things we can't control. And nearly 40% of all cancer cases could be avoided by changing some lifestyle choices, whether it is, you know, applying sunscreen, reducing smoking, vaping, drinking, um, having a higher fat diet, low fiber. So this is why survivorship is so important in helping to prevent the reoccurrence. And Mary and I are excited to be here to help you to learn different skills. Um, having a healthy weight helps too, if you can see the slide, um, to reduce many types of cancer, esophageal, pancreatic, colon, um, different gyno gynecological um, cancers, as well as kidney, liver, stomach, gallbladder. So with the um, exercise is a key component with helping to get to a healthy weight. Food and exercise and calories are connected because we do need the food and calories to fuel our body. And to lose weight, then it's usually recommended to eat less calories, obviously like a calorie deficit, and to gain weight, which we usually work a lot on at the, when people are in treatment, is recommended trying to consume more calories than you would burn during the day. And then to maintain weight, it would be an even amount. You know, a lot of the times we can't always take that into consideration. It might not always be that easy because sometimes people are on different medications, different hormones that can also make losing weight a little more challenging. In survivorship, you know, we really try to encourage more activity. So setting goals is very important because good things happen when we set goals. You know, it can serve as a guide in making decisions. You know, it promotes awareness. The goals can make you aware of your strengths. They can help you set a path to follow. Goals help you set priorities and they can help your self image when you see that you're making some positive changes in your current lifestyle. On the American Institute of Cancer Research or AICR.org website, it also has different challenges available for you. You know, you have to remember too that you've been through a lot. So you got to give yourself some grace and see where you are at right now. So on to the next slide is um, using different resources to help. Um, Living Well has their, their own app as well as Northwestern does. Here at Northwestern and Living Well, we encourage you to look at .org sites, which are science-based sites. Um, EatRight.org is our Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Um, ACS.org, AICR.org. And one of the things, you know, I've had patients um, use is my fitness pal if they're going through treatment sometimes because they're often trying to either gain weight. We don't recommend losing weight during treatment. And when they're trying to gain weight, sometimes that you feel like you're eating so much, but you're really not eating as much as you may think and you need more calories and protein. So my fitness pal is one of them and I have it logged onto my phone here. Um, it's hard to see, but having it on here, everybody is different. Some people like to have it on their phone. Some people like to write it down on a piece of paper. You know, there's different apps. There's one called Habit Tracker. That might be something that you might want to if you want to start out slow, just walking or adding some weights. 
you know, there's one called lose it. There's one called macros first. But one of the important parts of survivorship is becoming aware of what you are doing. There's also podcasts. So all these different things provide a lot of inspiration, but a lot of times we don't know how active we are if um, we're not keeping track. So keeping track, whether it's on our phones, um, if you have like a um, Apple Watch or a Fitbit, like a tracker of some kind to help you. Activity is the key to manage weight management, and there are many benefits of activity. You always want to check with your doctor first to make sure that everything is okay um, with you doing more exercise. The benefits of physical activity are the same, whether you're going through cancer treatment, you're finished with cancer treatment, and that is that it helps with anxiety. It helps with um, more consistent bowel management. It helps relieve stress. It helps you have a better appetite. You know, it, it can also help you just to have a better mood. It helps with brain health, reduces the risk of different diseases, helps you strengthen your muscles and bones. You know, and that's important for, you know, um, all aspects of life. And then also, you know, in, um, you know, people think when you're kind of relaxing a lot and maybe not as active as you want because you are going through treatment, we often hear that people are concerned with their muscle loss. And so strength training is very important. You want to pick activities you enjoy. Sometimes people have wonderful resolutions and things, and they find that pretty soon they've set too high of goals. So you want to pick things that you enjoy doing. I personally like biking and kayaking and walking with friends to catch up. You might ask how much on the next slide, mid slide you're on, on how much exercise we should do. The recommendations are 150 minutes of exercise per week. That is the recommendation for everybody over the age of two. That comes out to be about 30 minutes, five days a week, or 20 minutes, seven days a week. Research also shows that if 30 minutes at once is too much, you can do 10 minutes three times a day. I know when people are going through treatment, fatigue, you know, sets in. And that's where the 10 minutes can really help you. And is if you get up and you walk around the house, if you have some stairs, you know, I've suggested to um, patients, if they don't want to get too far from home, just walk out the front door and go a couple houses one way, turn around and go a couple houses the next. That way you're staying close to home, having somebody walk with you. You want to start and choose what works best for you. All of us are very different. Sometimes getting started is the hardest step of all. It's never too late to start. You want to start where you are right now. You don't want to compare where you were two years ago, four years ago, eight years ago. You've been through a lot. And so you want to set realistic goals and you want to make a plan. Activity, um, we've often been asked, what's the difference between moderate or vigorous activity? What this is, is you want it to be a purposeful activity. So if you're not quite sure if you're, if you're moderate or vigorous, you want it to be purposeful. Kind of like you're trying to catch a plane or a train. I always tell patients as an example, you're kind of hurrying up. Moderate activity is about 30 minutes, five days a week, and two days a week of strength training. Vigorous intensity is when if you're going running or jogging for about 25 minutes, three days a week, and two, more, two or more days a week of muscle strengthening. With more than 150 minutes a week, or 75 minutes a week of vigorous intensity, that will be equivalent to more and you'll see more health benefits. Also, if you're looking to lose some weight slowly and healthfully, you want to up the physical activity, okay? 
As we age, we lose about a third of a pound of muscle after we hit our upper 30s. That is why strength training is so important. And here at Living Well, they do have exercise classes that I would highly encourage you to attend, whether it's in person or virtually. Also, because of the pandemic, a lot of different exercise opportunities are on YouTube. Um, they do have Pilates, yoga, strength training. So if you're not sure on where to start, and you're not able to do a Living Well class, these are also opportunities for you to check out. I've done several myself and I was very happy with how they um, target all the muscle groups, but as well as they use safe technique. Yeah, there's quite a variety of them, don't you think? Oh, I do, yeah. I do. And if you wanna yeah, have really. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, there's something for all of you. Mm -hmm. It's nice that there are some free ones as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So with the activity, we want you, if you can't tell, is to move more and sit less. A lot of the times people end up binge watching TV and you know, this causes unhealthy weight gain and it can contribute to diabetes, heart disease. So maybe tell yourself, well, I'm gonna watch an episode on Netflix, but then I'm gonna get up and go for a walk. Or looking at your trackers and if you've you know, set 5,000 steps as a goal, maybe in a couple of weeks add 6,000 and 8,000. And then that way, you know, you can look at your tracker and or your phone and see where you are in regards to steps and then increase them as you're able to. Looking here on the activity, you know, um, having vigorous activity would be where your heart rate is increased. You can talk, but you're not able to sing a song. I can't sing without my heart rate being up. <laughs> So with the um, different activities, you know, one of the things also is like if you have access to a pool, walking in water is like walking two hours on land. So that is something else that you're able to do. And I think a lot of physical activity has been reduced in this by a lot of us because of the ease of technology and things like, you know, when you hear us say, you know, walk farther, park your car and, you know, farther in the parking lot, that might seem like a really easy thing to do. But, you know, if you're keeping track, it could be 200 steps difference. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're at work, you know, going to a different floor, you know, walking around inside the building, using the stairs instead of the elevator, if you're able to do that, all of that really does add up. If you're living in an apartment, maybe walking up the steps, you know, one way and then take the elevator back down. I also know that, you know, people might pile things on the bottom step and take them up one time, you know, at the end of the day. Try and use your stairs more often. You know, I know te um, uh, technology has helped us and we don't have to turn on the television. You just ask Alexis to turn on the television or Alexa <laughs> or, you know, going to the grocery store and having the groceries ready for you. All of that really does impact our physical activity. Physical activity can also help with stress and anxiety. And more than one in four people reported anticipating more stress last year than one in five years a uh, person's the um, year before. When you're facing a stressful situation, your pulse quickens, you breathe faster, your muscles tense, and your brain uses more oxygen. If the stress lasts too long, it can damage your health. So that's why, you know, having a work-life balance, relieving stress, taking care of ourselves, attending some of the classes virtually are very important. Getting, getting a massage. Getting a <laughs> massage, a facial, very important. You know, some stress can be good stress. Moving to, even though I don't think moving seems like a good stress, but getting a new job, welcoming a baby, that I do think would be a good stress. Mm -hmm. uh, competing, going on a first date, some types of bad stress could be um, parts that are detrimental, having, you know, relationships, financial stress, health problems, losing a loved one. 
High amounts of chronic stress is associated with increased aging, abnormal regulation of immune function, uh, function increasing inflammation, and oxidative damage. Medi uh, managing stre uh, stress will help you to sleep better, control your weight, reduce cortisol, have less muscle tension. Everyone likes to de-stress in different ways. Some people like to meditate. You want to find out what works for you. Going for a walk with a friend is one of my favorite things. Cooking a meal, putting on some nice music, you know, um, journaling, stretching and relaxing with yoga, you know, trying an app on our phones such as Headspace, Calm. They have nice jazz music, having a cup of tea coming to Living Well for a um, massage. So being well, you know, there's a lot involved and it's reducing stress, increasing the activity and good nutrition. I can't stress enough the importance of all of this with survivorship. We wanna help all of you to prevent any kind of reoccurrence. And like we said, you wanna be able to control things, control the controllables, um, and you can do that by the physical activity, eating healthy, following the Mediterranean diet, and getting support when you need it to help reduce the stress. Being well also helps to um, involve with this is adding more fruits and vegetables, following adding more anti-inflammatory foods, having a variety of the plant-based foods. The Mediterranean diet is not vegetarian and it's not low fat. And like Mary was saying, like sometimes people think a whole avocado or a half of avocado, we wanna have about an eighth. All of the foods here and eating like the rainbow will definitely help you to um, reduce the inflammation by adding anti-inflammatory foods. We want to make sure that we are having um, building our entrees more around vegetables, less meats, having more beans, lentil, farro, quinoa. I recommend making that in advance. At least that's what I do. I'll make a bag of beans either in a crock pot or an Instapot and freeze them in little portions. That way you can add about a half a cup of beans to a salad, to a bean burrito, you know, planning meals around seasonal foods. I'm really one for liking to cook quantities and having things ready to be able to use. You know, I'm still putting a little note on my fridge, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, yeah, that's very, <laughs> very helpful. Adding fresh herbs when in season. One of the things I know I mentioned before about the American Institute of Cancer Research, they really helped you to set goals. So one of the goals could be, as an example, that I'm going to replace sitting time with five or ten minutes or a thousand steps. So for every 10 minutes you sit, you're going to replace the steps. So kind of thinking ahead. Small amounts, right? Exactly. Start yeah. small and move. And with um, next week, we're going to have the Mediterranean style of eating. So I encourage all of you to join us again. And then some of the different cancer resource programs here, as we mentioned, are several yoga and fitness classes. And they do have opportunities for nutrition consults. If you're going through treatment, you can ask to talk to one of the dietitians at any one of the cancer centers. And if you're finished and you would still you'd like to see or talk to a dietitian, please reach out to Living Well at Nutrition Consultations. And the exact links are going to be in the packet or you can see them here for those of you that are um, watching from home. There is a nutrition landing page for culinary nutrition classes that we offer here. And there's also some art classes. So I encourage all of you to please try all of them. They're free and we're very excited to have these resources available to you. All right, so next we're going to um, talk a little bit about our fish recipe and um, Janine's going to go over and get ready to show you, and then I'm going to follow along. Um, 
So we're doing a white fish with pesto and roasted acorn squash tonight. You can probably hear us and we'll kind of switch cameras and switch gears a little bit. So we can still be heard, I think, over here. And we're just, for those of you that can't see us yet, we're washing our hands because we're big about washing hands and using gloves when we're here at Living Well especially when we're sampling um, recipes for people. And we did a little bit of cooking ahead. So we've got some things ready for you to show. And I'll let um, Janine talk a little bit about the uh, acorn squash. So the first um, thing is the acorn squash and we sliced it into quarter inch slices. Acorn squash is very good, it's seasonal. And it's very high in fiber. It has about nine grams of fiber. It's very high in vitamin C that helps to reduce inflammation. It's very high in fiber and it has protein in it. So what we did was we, if you can see this, we sliced them into quarter inch slices and then we dipped them in olive oil, added salt and pepper and seasoned them. All right, with the salt and pepper and olive oil. I do love our little trick that you used for cutting that acorn squash. Oh, what we did was um, pierced it with a fork first and then popped it in the microwave for about two minutes to make slicing a lot easier. We don't want anyone to cut their fingers or anything like that. We're big into um, being safe in the kitchen. Um, so this is some white fish and I'm going to um, Place it here on the platter. We basically just, um, this is such a simple recipe. We basically um, put some parchment and then put this white fish on um, the parchment. And on the top, we did uh, a little bit of olive oil. And then I really like to use um, Herb de Provence, which is kind of the, let's see, I can see if I can show it there. Um, it's just kind of like Italian seasoning, yet um, it has a little bit of um, lavender in it. So I like kind of that flavor. And then we are just using, this is a really simple meal. We're using a little bit of pesto um, on the fish. And then we're doing um, just uh, kind of having that as a side, and then you could do some other vegetables too, but Janine's got some really good ideas for the squash. And then we're adding some cranberries. You see how flavorful and color, or how colorful it is? I love, I love the sweetness from the craisins, and I like all the textures here because the fish is kind of, um, soft and flaky and then we have the acorn squash which has got a little bit of um because we cut it thin you really don't have to um uh use the peel you can eat the peel and then you've got the craisins which is a little bit sweet too so we're trying to make um really simple recipes so that you can um do them easily at home the the fish we cooked till it was just flaky I would say it probably took about 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less. And then we used a thermometer to make sure it got to the 140, 45 degrees. And then you can um, you can kind of see if you're putting a plate together that we've got a lot of yummy colors. The pesto, um, sometimes in the summer, we would make this fresh with some of our fresh basil. But we used the um, prepared jar one here. And then we did do a little bit of um, just black pepper on the acorn squash. We were thinking you could do a little cinnamon or brown sugar on there too. A little maple syrup. You're still getting a lot of good fiber. And um, so there's no problem there. 